Hey guys, Corey Smith here, Core Effects. Just want to do another video for you guys here. This one's a little bit different. I'm not going to be doing any technical analysis. I'm going to be going over one of the aspects that separates professional traders from amateur traders. You know, the 95% um, of the losing traders out there that are stuck in the amateur class that still do things and have ways about trading that they don't take it as serious enough and don't you know, treat it like a business like it is, and it results in, you know, consistently being stuck break even, losing blown accounts, all that stuff. Uh, there's there's many factors that can differentiate an amateur from a pro, and there's many things that pros do that set them apart, but um, I just wanted to cover one of them here in a quick video, and that's going to be trading routine. Basically, one of the foundation blocks of everything with anything in life is, is structure and routine which develops consistency which consistency develops perfection not in the sense of anything being perfect but as good as things can get you know practice and consistency makes perfect so the best way to become consistent is to have a structured routine and have an exact system to follow so I'm gonna go over trading a routine today um, it's very important. Uh, it took me a couple years before I realized the importance of it and started doing it. And it's still something that it's a continuous struggle to, you know, stay consistent with. But it it's something that you adhere to. And when you do, you notice huge improvements. Uh, I don't care what level you're at of trading. If you develop a routine and start doing this, you will start seeing huge changes in everything. Um... It's simple. It's it's. I'll just quickly go over what I do, how I have a routine, and a little bit of some tips and advice that I have for you guys to try to start doing the same. So one of the biggest th things I'm going to say right off the bat is get a whiteboard. Get a big two foot by two foot, whatever size you want whiteboard. Hang it on the wall next to where you're trading. Have it so you can take it off the wall, put it on your lap, walk to the other room with it, whatever. Get a whiteboard. Every single week, things change different events, different strengths and weaknesses and, and everything, different watch lists, trades you're looking for, whiteboards are unbelievably helpful when it comes to having a routine and having things organized and neat. Um, starting every Sunday, you know the market's open uh, on the other side of the world, but Sunday night I typically don't trade. Occasionally there's strong Chinese numbers coming out or... Um, something else going on whether it's election results in Europe or anything like that I, I typically don't trade Sundays because they're very slow moving Asian moves Asian session has some trap moves and everything so I, I typically won't trade Sundays but every once in a while there's an event that I'll I'll look at making trades around but so Sundays are usually days set up days to get ready for the week I'll get the whiteboard out I'll make a column on there for news using forexfactory.com I go on here, as you can see I have it set for this upcoming week. I have my filters set so that I'm only getting medium and high impact news. I've got all the majors, Chinese included, all the event types, right? So as you can see we've got the PMI numbers all coming out of Europe. These these are, you know, medium, they're, they're decent to watch, not really anything crazy, but basically what I do every Sunday is I'll go through the entire week, Monday to Friday, and I'll write on the whiteboard major events that I want to be looking out for, whether it's events I want to be trading around or events I want to be making sure I'm not trading around. Like we've got CPI, inflation numbers out of Australia. Now, the United States and now Canada have begun rate hiking, which is pretty much when, when there's growth and stimulation in the economy, inflation starts to kick up and raising the interest rates fights inflation but it is bullish for currencies and it's it's usually seen in a growth economy growth market you'll see interest rates being increased so the United States and Canada have kind of started increasing rates for the first time in a long time since the recession and rates got dropped to try to stimulate the economy and boost growth um, now it's kind of kind of starting to get into an inflation environment and these numbers like the CPI and the PPI out of countries are starting to become a pretty big deal 
because uh, the pressure has been turned up a little bit for other countries to start hiking their rates. Um, so that'll be a, that'll be a, an event worth writing down, worth noting. The CPI numbers coming out of Australia, they're they're being watched pretty closely right now. And then you can see the um, Reserve Bank of Australia's governor speaks. That typically isn't the biggest deal, but occasionally they'll throw hints in there of being hawkish or dovish about the next meeting coming up or something, and it can cause a, a move in the Aussie. So events like this, consumer confidence out of the U.S. That's that's not really too uh, epic to watch, but. GDP out of uh, pound, FOMC's meeting on Wednesday, this is big, the US dollar has been falling off really hard, um, they, they were calling for you know three to four rate hikes, we've had two this year, there's basically no chance they're going to rate, uh, hike rates this month, we can get mixed signals out of the US economy, but um, it's something to watch, if, if, if the Fed does surprise and raise rates here, this could shoot the dollar up higher and this bearish downtrend we've been seeing in the dollar could reverse pretty quickly. But uh, at the same time, Yellen could come out and be very dovish and we could see the U.S. dollar continue. But I'm going to note down this. I'm going to write the FOMC meeting Wednesday, 2 p.m. We've got core durable goods out of the U.S. 8.30 on Thursday. We've got Canadian GDP, advanced GDP out of the U.S. So I'll write down all these, all these events going on. Um, on my whiteboard, keep this up throughout the week, every single day, you, every single day, you gotta be watching this, and, um, this is a huge tool, this, this is, whether you're a pure technical trader or not, you should at least be aware of what is going on in the world of fundamentals, fundamentals are the driver of price, technicals are, are, are what guides it, but fundamentals are what drives price, so there's, you would be oblivious and only hurting yourself to not be aware of the events going on, no matter what level of trader you are and how much of a technical analyst you are. It would be just unintelligent to not have this and be aware of what's going on. So keep this up at all times. Make this part of your routine every single day. Check this and make sure you are well aware of what's going on with what countries and what pairs that day. All right, so Sunday night, I'm going to be on here making a list of um, exactly what events to watch for the week ahead. And if if I want to trade them, I know when to be behind my computer with pending orders and sitting there waiting for trades. Aside from that on Sundays, that is when I go through all of my charts and I update them. I check to see if there are new daily support resistance, weekly support resistance, broken, retested, form new ones. I'll go in there, adjust my charts, check out what's going on, make sure they're clean and ready for the week ahead. And I will also analyze I'm a trend trader I trade with the trend and I will go ahead and pick the pairs that are in nice trends when I see pairs that aren't trending they're stuck in choppy markets I chuck them off the list I'm not even looking at them to, to make trades there's enough pairs to look at to begin with I don't need to be searching pairs that are stuck in a chop looking for a trade there's, there's just no point for me my system doesn't work with that market so I'm not gonna look for them so I'll make a watch list another thing I put on the whiteboard I put a watch list and I'm going to list what pairs are strong trending and which pairs I want to be looking for setups. I want to be looking for the Euro dollar this past week broke um, weekly resistance, strong weekly and daily zone, broke higher, came back retested. I got long here on the retest, rode it higher, still breaking into new high territories. I'm going to watch in this, chair, this pair. Look at this. We've got the 20, 50, 200 SMAs all in perfect order. 200 starting to slope up. These two are nicely sloped upward. We're in a strong uptrend here. You can see prices making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. Beautiful. I'm looking for I'm looking for longs in this trade. This is going to be on my watch list, right? Let's see pound dollar as well. It broke out, then came back in a little bit of a false break, but look at this uptrend. 20 just crossed back above the 50. A little ribbon pattern here. You can see they're all in the right order. I'm going to be looking at that to make trades, right? So I make a watch list. Uh, I list all the trending currencies, or if you have a system that trades range-bound currencies, you make a watch list of all the pairs and ranges. Whatever it is you do, make a watch list. Pairs you want to be looking at. You don't want to wake up in the morning, and or when uh, in a London session open, or whatever you're doing, and have no no direction. You don't want to wake up. Uh, that, that's inefficient. That's not getting things done as efficiently as you can. And... With anything in life, you want to be efficient, you want to be structured, you want to be organized, you want to be prepared. Making a watch list, 
making an event list, this is how you get prepared, right? So make a watch list. Not just Sunday nights. I do that Sunday to prep for Monday morning, but every single night of the trading week, night before, I'm on my computer, checking takes 20 minutes, make a watch list. Your chart should be clean and organized from Sunday. Make a watch list. Figure out what you're going to be looking for. No reason to be looking at pairs that don't fit your criteria, so don't look at pairs that aren't, in my case, trending. If pairs aren't trending strong, not even looking at them. There's no reason for me to open that chart. That's when you get bored, you get greedy, you try making trades just to make trades, and it's just stupid. So make a watch list. That is where you stay. Make a news event list. That's where you check constantly, right? So then, every single day of the trading week, I have set hours to be behind the computer. You don't want to just trade any minute of any day and just take trades just because you want to take a trade. That That is the, the worst way to be. And that I lost so much money for the first couple of years doing that. I would just go about my life. I would have an hour here. I would go on the charts, look to make a trade. I'd be bored. So I would throw on a trade. It was a stupid trade that I would should never have been in. There's no volume or liquidity going on because it's... 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and barely anything's going on with the Euro dollar or whatever pair you want to trade. And it's just a stupid, tra stupid trade to be in. Have set hours. I trade 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. is where I mainly look for trades. Now that's going to be the U.S. market open, one of the most liquid, strong moving sessions. And that overlaps with the London session which is the other strongest session. So that right there is the highest volume period there is to trade. If there's going to be moves that are made strong, yes, they can happen in London, yes, they can happen in the U.S., yes, they can happen in Asia, they can happen any time, but the highest statistical time, the highest percentage time, the highest probability time of these strong moves is going to be that U.S. Open with the overlay of the European session, right? Every single morning, 6.30, I'm up behind my computer, Checking my watch list, going through the pairs, looking for trades to make. If there's no trades to make, okay, I move on, I do something else with my day. I'm not going to sit behind the, the, the computer staring at these charts and again making boredom trades. That is how you lose your money. I know you hear so many times from traders say capital preservation is the most important thing in the game. That couldn't be more accurate and I always thought like, okay, Saving my money, what is that going to do? We're doing this to make money. But if you think about it, if you make 10 trades and two of them, let's say you make 10 trades and five of them are losers, five of them are winners. Of the five losers, two of them were boredom trades that you traded because you were looking at charts, bored, trying to make setups happen instead of waiting for the right setup to happen. And you took those two trades and lost both of them. Let's say you take those two boredom trades out of there. Let's say you have a routine and a time to be behind the computer. Let's say you take those two boredom trades out of there, right? So now you've got three losses, five winners. Let's say one of them's a loss, one of them's a winner. So now you've got six wins, four losses, right? Let's say five and five, you were just barely profitable or you were, you were negative. Now, with an extra win and one less loss, you're a positive trader. By preserving your capital and not taking stupid trades, you were able to increase your capital by having the, the opportunity to make better trades that you're planned for and that are accurate and fit your trading system. Having a set window of time to trade is a huge, huge advantage that most traders still to this day don't do, but the, the real pro successful traders have routines like this. There's a reason that the, some people make it in this game and some don't. And some of, one of the big important starting blocks is this. It's so simple to do, but so neglected. Have a set time to trade and have it be when there is volume and liquidity in the markets. Have it be when there's going to be movements. Have it be at the European Open. Have it be at the US Open. Have it be at a time when you can find good trades. I trade outside of this only when there's a news event or, you know, something else particular going on that's in my plan. I don't just have any times a day that I want to trade and just trade whenever I, I feel like taking a trade. That's failure. Setting up for failure right off the rip. Not what you want to do. Alright? So I have a watch list. 
check it every night, adjust it every morning, and then every night again, you want to look through all the pairs, because there could have been a range bound pair that now broke to new highs or new lows and is now trending, and sometimes the fresh start of a new trend can cause the biggest moves. The end of a trend and the beginning of the trend is typically the biggest moves. So constantly be double checking your watch list at night, but in the morning, have your targets to go right to. Don't waste time in the morning when there's trades setting up and big moves happening, looking through all the charts and trying to determine which pairs to look at. All right, and another thing that I use every week and every day is going to be this tool right here. This is the currency performance tool. I don't know what's going on here? This is the strength and weakness tool for currency pairs. Basically, what this does is you've got the time frames here. This is on finviz.com. You go to Forex and then you go to performance. Right? You've got these time frames here daily, weekly, monthly. So every Sunday, I'm going to go to the weekly. And I'm going to see which pairs perform the best and which pairs perform the worst. Last week, the pound, dollar, and CAD were the worst performers. CAD, pound and dollar were by far the worst performers, right? Then you had the Swiss, the Euro, and New Zealand, all the best performers. So like anything else with trading, the only thing we have to go off of for what price is going to do in the future is what it's done in the past. That is our best and only measure of what it's going to do in the future. So, if the pound, dollar, and CAD were the three weakest pairs this week, chances are next week they're going to continue to be the three weakest pairs. Now, Monday can open, Sunday can open, and the pound could take off and be the best pair of the week hands down. We could have uh, Wednesday morning strong GDP numbers out of the pound, and this can just blast off right back into the lead. That, that happens. That's trading. Nothing is for sure. Nothing is totally predictable. All you can do is line up probabilities. But another big thing to put on your side is, okay, now when, when you look at these charts and you see, let's go to a pound chart, for example, and you see this downtrend, 20 crossed under the 200, 20 is under the 50, they're sloped downward. When you see things like this, this can easily tell you, okay, the pound's been weak. Okay, the pound's been weak. Okay, the pound's been weak. See, the charts can tell you everything. Right there, you can see they're in downtrend all across the board. So that's going to say, okay, last week the pound must have been weak. You go here, it shows that it was. Monthly, it's still top three. Bottom three, I mean. So, that being said, this can help you find what charts you want to be watching. If uh, I use the Forex performance chart, Specifically for my news trading strategy, this is one of the things that is a mandatory aspect of my trade strategy with news, but it helps with any kind of trading. It shows you what's been strong and what's been weak. If the euro was the strongest, top three strongest pair last week, I want to go into this week. Biases can change at any point, but to go into the week, I want to go in with the euro being strong. I want to be looking at euro charts like the euro dollar. Like the Euro Yen. Euro CAD's been in a downtrend, but it had a strong... It's testing this resistance here now. Broken support. But um, the Euro was strong. Euro was strong. Euro was strong. Broke out, made a new higher high. See? This is something that you can use to your advantage. It shows you what's been strong, what's been weak, where you want to look for relative strength and weakness so that you know what trades to be looking for. Just another tool in the box, you know? Just throw this on the wall, get this as something you continuously check, and you'll know, okay, pound's been weak last week, Sunday night, going into Monday, I want to look for, you know, going against the pound. I want the pound to be weak, continue being weak, maybe let's say the news event Tuesday, if the pound is still weak going into... Wednesday a.m. Still week going into this, then I'm going to be looking at the report being disappointing numbers again. I want the GDP to show growth is, is worse than they had expected. And uh, the preliminary GDP is showing that, you know, economy hasn't been as strong as they wanted and that pound's going to keep falling. So this is all stuff you want to be aware of. You want to have 
at your access to watch consistently. So, aside, I'm not going to go into details about journaling and this and that and anything like that. Those, those, those videos will come later date, but I just wanted to touch on a key important aspect right now of having a structured routine. It means so much and it is so simple to do. It really is just one of those simple, simple, simple things that most people do not do. You know, it's having a journal is probably the number one thing that pros do that, that amateurs don't. If you don't know your profit to loss, your risk to reward, your average pip win per trade, your average pip loss per trade, you know, if you don't know these numbers, how do you expect to make it in this business? If you owned a pizza shop and you didn't know how many pizzas you sold in a day versus how much you, uh, how much you spent to buy them or how much profit you made versus how much cost you spent to, to make those profits. Or if you're marketing, how many ads, how much dollars in marketing did you have to spend for each customer to come in the door? If, if you don't know numbers like this, your business is done. You're failed. You have no shot in making it. If you don't know the, the details and how you're performing to tweak things, you're never going to, you're never going to make it in this business ever, ever. If you're winning 70% of your trades, but your losers are bigger than your winners, you don't know that, but you're a, not a profitable trader. That's, that's ridiculous. You could work on risk management, work on your stop losses, bigger targets, tighter stops and fix everything. But you'll never know what the problem is if you don't track it. If you don't have routines and structure and guidelines, this business is not for you. You will never, ever make it. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to be anything other than truthful. This business chews people up and spits them out. There is no feelings. There's no remorse. There's no mercy in these markets. You will get stepped on and you will get thrown out the window without even knowing what time it is. You have to be prepared. You have to have every single advantage as possible in your arsenal and on your side. Every edge you can have, you have to have or you will get taken over. There's someone else working harder than you, faster than you, and smarter than you. And that's going to take all your money. And that's what trading is. You have to be in the loop and on top of your game. And the number one way to start this is getting a routine. Add to the routine. Adjust the routine. Start realizing what you do or don't like, what works, what doesn't work. But have a routine and follow it. If you don't follow it, you're only hurting yourself. And and that's, that's just the way it works. There's reasons why a lot of people, most people, 95% of people fail in this industry. And this is one of the simplest ones, but one of the strongest reasons why. It's just simple as that. Have a routine. If you need any help setting up a routine, working around a full-time job and schedule, everyone does it, uh, let me know. Reach out to me. Shoot me a message. Go on my Instagram, core.fx, Snapchat, Facebook, you know, my YouTube channel. Subscribe and like me if you like these videos, guys. I'll keep making more, but reach out to me. Always feel free to reach out to me, and um, I'll definitely be able to help you out. I'll definitely be able to help you take make a routine. Here's my email if anyone has any questions. Corey at corefxtrading.com. If you have any questions at all about anything, feel free. Contact me. I'm here. I'm a trading coach. Got my own trading uh, training. You know, that's what I do. So feel free. I'm always open to emails and questions and anything. Just reach out to me. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below any feedback you've got for me. If you like these videos, I'll keep them coming. Uh, thank you guys. Really appreciate taking the time to watch this and have a good day.